Welcome to Kingdom Concepts. I'm Josh, and this is my beautiful wife, Eliana. We are here in the studio with you today, amen, and so excited, amen, to be able to share, amen, this wonderful, wonderful revelation that God has entrusted to us concerning, amen, how powerful yes. your words are when it comes to marriage. Uh, marriage is such a, a, a beautiful thing, amen. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the greatest examples of what our life is to be towards the Lord. You know, um, husbands love your wives the way Christ loves the church, you know, and gave his life for it. And, you know, uh, wives love your husbands. You know, we, it's, a, it's a beautiful example of the harmony that God wants us to have. And a marriage can either be good or a marriage can be bad. Yes, we get to practice it every day. <laughs> yes. We get to practice every day loving God how we love our husband, how we love our spouse. We get to, you know, love love your spouse as you love Christ, you know, so how are you loving your spouse? Is that the way you're loving God? You know, so we get to practice every day. We get to, mm -hmm. we get to show Christ's love to our spouse every single day. And to be honest with you, we are, we have a lot of experience in both areas, <laughs> <laughs> what not to do and what to do. We weren't always serving the Lord. We had three oh. three years that, that uh, we don't consider our marriage. This is our 35th year of marriage. I know, we've been together, just so you know, you know, because I know we look so young, and who are we to be talking about marriage? But we have been married, October 7th, we will be married 35 years, Amen. together 36 years. And we can say that the first three years of our marriage, us being together in our marriage was horrible. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was the pits. It was horrible. Then we got saved. And then when we got saved, we had, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're watching today or you're going to share this with somebody mm -hmm. that uh, maybe you're uh, coming into getting saved and you, your marriage is not that great. Maybe you just got saved and both of you and your spouse just got saved and you are, have had a way to be in marriage. Mm -hmm. And now that you're saved, there's a different way. You know, that, yeah. that was uh, for us. Or maybe you're you're single and you know that you're going to get day. married one, one day. One of these days. You do not want to marry a good-looking mistake, That's amen? That's right. Uh, God has everything perfect for us. And yeah. he's not going to give you somebody that uh, requires uh, some assembly. <laughs> some assembly required. <laughs> We're all growing, though. When you get married, yeah, you're, you're growing progress. together. You're growing together in the Lord, not trying to get the Lord in him while you're married. You know, he should yeah. already, it should already be. There. Yeah, God's not going to give you a project. You know, that's just not the way he is. Amen. Uh, I'm t as you can tell, this is something that we, we've been praying about this for a few months, uh, about ministering along this line. And so, uh, you know, we're excited to have you with us today. Grab your notebook, grab your Bible. Um, I encourage you, if this is your first time watching Kingdom Concepts, we've yes. got a lot of amazing content that you can go back, you can go to all of our social media, and you can see the things that we've already ministered yes. on. And we do have a lot of things on marriage as well, uh, but we've been talking about how important the Word yes. of God is, amen, and we want to talk about concerning marriage. We talked about healing the last couple of episodes, but this is an area where we really want to pay some attention because how important the uh -oh. spoken word is over your marriage over your marriage because yeah. right now we're seeing more i've never seen marriage come under attack oh my god like never yes. before it's because satan's after the nuclear family yes, yes. you know he, he doesn't want children being raised with their their father or their mother he, he wants there to be fractured homes i grew up in a broken home mm -hmm. you know um you didn't and and you can see the difference yeah you could <laughs> there was definitely a difference in it you know and so uh, our prayer is that what we've learned, we'll be able to share yes, with you. Yes. And so uh, we're here to, to enhance, amen, your life, amen. And our prayer is that something that we say today will minister and go a long way with you. But uh, I think that if we're going to start, then um, let's start at the beginning. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let's go to the book of Genesis, you guys. Amen. Turn your Bibles over to Genesis. Um, we see that in the book of Genesis, God created everything, you know. Um, but I want to get down to verse 26. Here you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit um, speaking, and this is what they said. And God said, let us, that's the word mm -hmm. Elohim, mm -hmm. which is the plural form of God in the Hebrew, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image. So physically, let's make him look like us. Mm -hmm. He says, after our likeness, mm -hmm. let them have dominion 
over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over all the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So he says, let us make man in our image. So let's make him look like us and in our likeness, which means literally stuff. Let's make what, what's in us, let's make that be inside of him. And so this is where we see the beginning. And you read in verse 27, so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he, him, male and female, it says, created he, them. Amen. So we're both made in the image of Almighty mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's important for us to have that understanding that we were made like him. And I think that when it comes to, to understanding the power of that, I think a lot of times there's a tremendous amount of emphasis placed on Adam Mm -hmm. You know, because he was the the the, the man, mm -hmm. you know, and Eve was the helpmate. Mm -hmm. And usually when it comes to Eve, everybody's always talking about her being the one, mm -hmm. you know, that was deceived by the snake. But it was both of them. Yes, it was. And, and we're not going to go deep into that. But uh, when God told them, don't eat from the tree, Eve wasn't even created yet. So it was man's responsibility, Adam's, to tell Eve, you know, make sure she understood. And when... Mm -hmm. The snake, Lucifer, or Satan, um, Satan, no. <laughs> when he was tempting her, he was testing to see what she knew. Mm -hmm. And when she didn't quote it right, when she didn't say exactly what God said, he took advantage of it, her with a question. Mm -hmm. And so anyways. Uh, That's why I always say that. Um, I've, and I've always said, you know, if anything's wrong in our marriage or anything's off, I always tell you it's your fault because you're the priest. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the man. Yeah, that's right. But we see right here this powerful force. And we've been talking about the power of the word. You know, God said, God said, God said, and God saw everything yeah. he said. And we just see this played out in Genesis. But when he made Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. you know, prior to that, when he made light, when he made the land and all the things that we, this earth, the universe, he always said it was good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when he made Adam and Eve, the Bible says that God saw everything, verse 31, that he had made, and it was very good. Mm. Because God now had two people, amen, you know, we know this is what was accomplished, that were made like him. Mm. Amen. The Bible says we're a little bit lower, made a little bit lower than the angels, and that's not exactly translated properly. It means, because the same word Elohim is the word that they use for angels, because when they interpreted this, the interpreters could not fathom us being made a little bit lower than God. Mm. And that's why they used the word angel, mm -hmm. um, in case you didn't know that. That was free. Um, <laughs> but, but so we have this creative force that's inside of us. And um, not to go into a, a deep teaching, but I think that this is good for, as a foundation for where, for yes, where I know where we're going. going. Uh -huh. So I'm going to take it there. That's okay. It's important. All right, so I want to move into another area for the sake of Land of Foundation. Yeah, it's important because um, w there's too many marriages that aren't fighting. They're they're not fighting to to keep their marriage holy, to keep their marriage strong, to keep their marriage uh, healthy. They're they're not fighting because they don't understand how they can. They don't understand that God has given us such wonderful tools in His Word to. Um, to, to be a help to us when we're struggling. Too many marriages are just like, it's a contract now, not a covenant. Oh, and, and, and what's sad is that statistic-wise, one in every two marriages ends in divorce. And it, the, the statistic is the same in the church. It is. And that's what's sad is that it's not, that it's not very different. Sad. And so it lets us know a few things. Number one, you, you can't help the world if you're like the world. Mm, come on. You can't help the world if you're like the world. You can't be talking about how God can help uh, a sinner's marriage when your marriage is in the same condition because um, you have nothing to offer them. Yeah, because the tools that a sinner uses should be different than the ones you use. You should be using the word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, if some a sinner's marriage is better than yours, you need to figure out why. <laughs> exactly. They might be using principles, godly principles, and don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah, because it'll work. I mean, truth will work for yeah, anyone. You know, and at the same time, uh, when it comes to uh, this this beautiful, uh, I don't want to call it institution, but this beautiful thing of marriage, uh, it, it's it's amazing how God designed yes. us. 
And when you do things according to the design, mm -hmm. then that's when life is very good because you're in agreement mm -hmm. with the creator and the way that he created us. There's a reason why God made men, men, mm -hmm. and women, women. And when we try mixing those things up, it doesn't work. Mm -mm. You know, when a man tries being a woman or a woman tries being a man, it, it always amazes me, uh, you know, when it comes to that kind of uh, uh mindset that the enemy tries bringing is that you'll you'll have um it, it, well, i don't want to go down that road too much but you'll 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 have the it, the the those the enemy distorts everything mm -hmm. the enemy distorts everything you know you brought up something earlier you said uh that you were brought up in a broken home and i was not mm -hmm. you know and the both had problems, but you were brought up in a broken home. I was brought up in, in not a broken home. But neither one of us were brought up in a home where the word was the standard when it came to our marriage. So you had to unlearn things. I had to unlearn mm -hmm. things. My parents had a good marriage. Your parents did not. But neither one of them, the standard was not the word. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, I, I, my parents were good parents, but no, the, very the good. standard was not the word. Mm -hmm. So you had to unlearn things and I had to unlearn things. So we came into uh, a marriage with your understanding of what the word, what, what a marriage was supposed to be. I came in with understanding what I thought it was supposed to be. And it was not good. It, it was We clashed. So much we clashed, you know? And so... What we're endeavoring to do is to show you what the word says your marriage is supposed to be, what you, if you're single, are supposed to be looking for in a marriage when it comes to the type of woman. Because if listen to me, men, if you're single, you have a job, you have a car, you are righteous and you're not married and it's time for you to be married, let me tell you something. The word says that you look for the wife. Mm -hmm. You look for the wife. You're supposed to be looking for the wife. You're supposed to be searching her out. You know, women, you are supposed to be, you know, preparing yourself and making sure that you're ready for when he finds you. Let him find you. And let me tell you something. If he asks you out on a date and a text, don't even answer him back. He's not ready. He's not ready. But that was free. Yeah. Oh, we're going to dive deep into this. I'm telling you, this is such a huge Amen. subject matter. And I'm telling you, we're just getting started. Amen. By the end of this, you're going to have a, 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 a great understanding of what you should be looking for. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere. This is getting good. Thank you for watching Keen of Concepts. To watch previous episodes of Kingdom Concepts, scan the QR code on your screen now or visit our YouTube channel that has new episodes being released every single week. Get connected with us. Follow, like, and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. We invite you to our local church, West Coast Believer Center International in Visalia, California. You're welcome to join us in person or to join us online. For location, place, and times, please visit wcbci.org. To access all the avenues that JBM has to be a blessing to you, please scan the QR code on your screen now. For more information, please visit joshuabolgerministries.org. Now, back to our show. Welcome back, everyone. You know, right before the break, we were talking about how you and I, we both had our idea of what marriage should yes. be. and. They weren't the same. No, and they were so, both wrong. <laughs> yeah, we were both wrong. We 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 clashed. Um, and the the challenge that I have found when it comes to you know helping couples yeah. is that you have so many people that what you were raised in is usually what you live out. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was raised with a mom that had to be everything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, until God brought you know my my stepfather into the picture, and um, and you were raised with a father and a mother you know, that were, that were constant. They were there, you know, and, uh, and they did have a love for God, you know, mm -hmm. they were very good Catholics, you know, and they made sure that you guys were in church, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but when it came to marriage, we didn't have the blueprint for marriage. God's word is, is the blueprint. Yeah, I love that. I love that, um, that phrase about our Bible being the blueprint for marriage because too many times people are using the world, the world as their blueprint. You know, what the world says their marriage is supposed to be, what the world um, is is instilling in them, and it has nothing to do with the word. Yeah. And those will fail. Mm -hmm. Those will fail. So the word of God is his blue, 
blueprint. The word of God is what we need to be speaking. That's what we're talking about. Speaking those things into our marriage. And understanding the power that we possess. Because yes. again, I think a lot of times people, when it comes to the book of Genesis, when it comes to Adam and Eve, who are the very first couple. Yes. You know, that's that right there is the first couple. We are the offspring, every one of us, every one of us mm -hmm. are the offspring of Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. you know? And um, when you, you know, that part of your Bible that you skip over, you know, the genealogy part, everybody where, yeah. you know, so-and-so who begat so-and-so who begat so-and-so, all those names you can't pronounce, you know, usually people skip over that. I remember one time God told me, no, you need to read that. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was in the Gospels reading that. And when it got to Adam, it took it from Jesus all the way to Adam. And when it got to Adam, it said, Adam, who was the son of God. Mm -hmm. We are children of God. I love that. But when it comes to Adam and Eve, they had a harmony and agreement. They, they had what every every single Christian should be reaching for. Mm -hmm. And that is a marriage created by Almighty God. They began with that. They began complete. They, they began with what was perfect. They began with God's best. And, and we don't often pay attention to that, what they had. We pay attention to the fall. Wait, when we think of Eve, we think about the woman that, that, that uh, uh, you know, was deceived by the snake and encouraged her husband to do the same. When we think about Adam, we think about a weak man that allowed his wife to get him to compromise. You know, I mean, that's the kind of mindset that Christians have. Yeah. And we totally miss out on what was perfect because what was perfect gives us a glimpse of what God wants for us. Yeah, I love what you said that, you know, we, we concentrate on what they lost, not what they had. Exactly. And, you know, I think a lot of times marriage is that that's what happens when you start having problems. You, you, uh, Start looking at what you feel like you've lost mm -hmm. instead of what you've had, why you got married, why you wanted to marry that person. You know, there was a reason. And you, you, your focus begins to shift on what I feel like I've lost instead of what I have, mm -hmm. instead of what, what good was there you mm -hmm. know, at the beginning or what good was there that got you to want to get married. Um, and so, yeah, you know, going back to the very beginning is really good to figure out, you know, what was it that they were supposed to have, you know, yeah. the goodness of God, the goodness of things? And, you know, it, it's interesting because we're thinking about this. Can I borrow your, your notes here for a second? Because I, I, was, I was just thinking right now of this example, just so you guys go with me on this, you know, because this right here, I'm sure many can, people can relate to this. Look at this. All right. You guys see what I have here? All right. You see that? All right. Got a piece of paper, right? And this is what happens. Let's say this is a couple's life. This is your life together with your spouse. This is a marriage, okay? Oh, watch this. We've been doing a little bit of illustrated sermons this last couple of seasons. Yeah, because I, I want to I do something here. Okay, I'm not an artist, so don't judge me, okay? Okay, now, what do you see? Come on, what do you see? This is something that we use in counseling sometimes. What do you see? I'm going to tell you, most of you right now are probably saying, I see a dot or I see a spot. Am I correct? And this is what happens with couples and marriages. Yes. This is what happened to Adam and Eve when we study them. You know, here you have this whole marriage, amen, all of this white paper, right? All of this, and you got this little spot. And this is what happens is, you know what, this was always there. The spot was always there when, when, they, when a man and a woman came together, but the focus wasn't on the spot. Right. The focus was on all the good. But what destroys marriages is when we focus on the one thing that we don't uh, like right. or the little things that don't matter. We forget all of the good, good, you know, that was there and focus on this part, and that's what destroys. And that's what Satan tries getting us to mess up on. He did the same thing with Adam and Eve. Here, God places them in the Garden of Eden. We'll talk about that more. They had everything that was good. All they knew was life. Mm. And what did he tempt Eve with? He goes, oh, you eat, man, you're going to know good and evil. Mm. All she knew was good. Yeah. You know, but her knowing evil is what destroyed her. All right, anyways, thank you for letting <laughs> me mess up your notes. I feel like I'm on the episode of Blue's Clues. <laughs> what do you see? And then you're waiting because you know somebody's talking out there. <laughs> but you, you think about that. I mean... Think about like even in our relationship, you know, when we started off, all we seen was what we loved about each other. Yes. And, and, um, but then over time, 
you you know look at what happened to us mm -hmm. you know for three years we forgot about what we fell in love with mm -hmm. with each other yeah you know and it wasn't until we got saved god was able to restore and that's what our prayers are and our hope is for you today yeah. is that what we're sharing it'll help maybe open up your eyes and you know it took a while and it took work i remember you know we we got saved and we had destroyed so much our marriage was just so messed up and I would honestly, I, we always talk about how we feel like the, we get saved. And so I feel, I feel like the first five years of our marriage after we got saved, I felt like it was such hard work. It was so, um, not tedious, but it was just work. It was like on purpose, we were making sure to change. On purpose, we were making sure to, to be sensitive to each other. On purpose, we were making sure to uh, uh, just, erase everything that we had done to each other mm -hmm. and it just felt like we were just so like a roller coaster you know of emotions mm -hmm. and a roller coaster of of just fixing our marriage but you know what one thing that was so amazing was that you loved god i loved god and we were committed to loving god and because we love god so much yeah we could bear whatever was happening yeah. here until one day it was just like it's not, I mean, I'm not saying marriage is not going to be work. What I'm saying is one day it was, it was a healthy work. It mm -hmm. was a, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're doing. And, and it became everything that it was supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know? It's because we, we came to a place where we were intentional. Yes. Intentional say, yes. and having a healthy marriage. And yes. so you might be watching us right now and maybe your relationship is in a very compromised position. Maybe you've had the worst things that you can think of happen in your marriage. Maybe there's adultery. Maybe, you know, that infidelity has been there. Maybe, uh, you know, you're sleeping in different rooms. Maybe, abused. you know, yeah, maybe you've been abused, you know, with words or with hands, you know. Um, we don't know, but what we do know is this, is that God's word is able to help any situation. We are here to testify that we know that God can do anything to help anyone because our marriage was destroyed. Mm -hmm. We were already on the way to divorce when you got saved. Mm -hmm. And then I got saved shortly thereafter, but it was us going back to the beginning, going mm -hmm. back to God's word. What does God say about marriage? And that's where we found um, his blueprint. Yes, we found the blueprint. And so it's the blueprint we want to share with you. Amen. So we just brought up how Adam, you know, how God, it was in his heart to create, you know, male and female. He made them in his image. And then uh, again, we talked about how a lot of the good was forgotten because we think more about the fall than we think about what was yes, lost. What wanted, yes. So let's talk about what was lost here for a second. Let's talk about what was good before it happened. You know, when God made man, he made them equal, male and female, but he made Adam first. Now, check this out, because uh, this is something that I think that we, we, we miss out on. When you read over here in Acts, I mean, Genesis, I apologize, Genesis uh, verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And that's um, Genesis 2. Verse 7. Yes. And um, that word living soul, literally to translate it properly in the Hebrew is he became a speaking spirit. I mean, no, God is spirit. Amen. And you and I are spirit. We are a spirit. We possess a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, and you live in a body. Amen. Uh, we are a triune being. And... The thing right here that is so important is that it's not enough to have something that's made in the image of God if it does not have the breath of God. Because uh, you can have an image, but if there's no breath, then all you have is a corpse, you know? But God breathed, amen, into man, the very thing, uh, the breath of life. You're, you're talking the thing that accompanies every word spoken. You can't have words without breath. That's why if someone's being choked, they can't speak. Why? Because you have to have breath to be able to form a word. Mm -hmm. When God spoke, light be, amen, there, the, the, the breath of life was in the word, amen, and it happened. So God's word, amen, there's breath. It's like a balloon. A balloon's like the word of God. It has the breath of God inside of it, mm. amen? And so God breathed into him to become a speaking spirit. And then when you read on, you know, uh, so our understanding is this, that when God made Eve, he made another speaking spirit. Man, that's really good stuff there. 
I can't wait till we get into it. <laughs> I the know. Next episode. <laughs> okay, this is so good, amen. It is. Well, well, you need the word to back up what we're saying. Yes. So what you're saying is really good. Uh, I want you to stay in that in that line of what you're saying right now yeah. till, till we get back to. Yeah, we have the benefit of jumping back into this here in a little while. You're going to have to wait, amen, till the next episode. But we want to say thank you for joining us today on Kingdom Concepts. And if you just started watching our program or if you have been watching it, thank you so yes, much. We're so blessed so to have thank you, you so as our much. guest. Amen. In the studio. Amen. God has allowed us to be able to take these teachings around the world. Every week we're That's ministering right. to millions and millions of households all across the USA and into Europe. And it's because of the Lord and because of our faithful partners. And we want you to prayerfully consider joining with us, joining with our vision, amen, to reach the masses with the gospel of Jesus amen. Christ. Would you please prayerfully consider becoming a partner with Joshua Bolger Ministries? Would you help us, amen, by sending us to the nations, amen, by helping us to be able to take these teachings and to be able to bring them to the world? Amen. amen. It's through people like you, amen, whose lives have been touched and changed. Amen. And we appreciate all of your prayers. Amen. Because God keeps opening more doors for us to do more things. And we know that we can only accomplish that with the help of others as God works with us. Amen. We love you. We call you blessed. And we definitely look forward to jumping back into another episode of Kingdom Concepts with you. We love you. Have a blessed day. that's energizing that armor. Armor that was designed for you to be able to take a hit, church. Engage your enemy. You need to let the devil know, man, you hit the wrong family, man. You don't, man, you must not lost your mind. You came to the wrong house, amen. I'm not that person you thought I was, amen. I'm no longer the person I used to be, amen. You have to rise up, amen, in the power of his might. Amen, knowing I am armed for battle, man. I am dressed to kill, devil. I'm, I'm, I'm empowered with armor from on high. When you take your place, child of God, and that devil's thrown everything at you that he can, and you're still standing there in your faith, having done all the stand, he's hit you repeatedly, and you're still standing. Come on, you're not down. You haven't run away. You're still standing. When you come to that place and the devil's thrown everything he can at you, let me tell you something. There's an anointing that gets provoked in your life because you've learned how to endure like a good soldier.